does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Yeah, YouTube, I'm back again for another Game Crafter Spotlight, where I spotlight a different Game Crafter game every month and do a series of videos on that specific game. And this month, we're checking out Quests for the Lost Pixels for one to four players. Take about two hours to play. And this is going to be a setup video. I'm going to show you how to set things up. So the first thing you're going to need to do is decide how many players you have. I'm going to show you how to set up a two-player game, but I'm also going to give you the details on how you can set up different player counts. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go through the hero deck and pick out one of the heroes that you want to play as. Get that hero card, get their matching little standee, then the rest of the standees, the characters, and all this good stuff can go back into the box. You will not need them. Next, you're going to make sure you have these decks out on the table. The potion deck, the event deck, spell deck, gems, artifact, monster first floor, treasure first floor, and the dungeon tiles, in addition to these red and green time cards right here. Now, the first thing you're going to do is shuffle up all those cards, not together, but separately, and give each player two spell cards. Each player is going to look at the two spell cards, decide which one they want to keep in their hand, and slide one to the bottom of the deck. After each player has done that, you're going to make sure that each player also has three gems cards that they will start with. So at the beginning, when you're ready, you should have your character, you should have your stand D, you should have one spell, you should have three gems, and you should be able to reach the dice in all these cards. Now the rest of the cards, and there are tons and tons and tons of cards in this game, you'll want to keep separated off to the side, because eventually you will get to the 8th floor, in which case you'll need to deal with the monsters and the treasures, and eventually you will get to the 10th floor, in which case you can hopefully get the lost pixel, but for now you can set all those off to the side. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is count out a specific number of time cards based on the number of players in the game. And I'll put that picture right here, but I have 20 cards because I'm playing a two-player game. Next, what you want to do is set up a certain number of dungeon tiles. Now, when you're setting up the dungeon tiles, there's two very important tiles, which are these tiles right here. This one with the stairs going down is going to be on the table already. This is where you're going to start off at. This one is going to be mixed in with the rest of the dungeon tiles. And once again, going back to that picture, uh, I have 20 dungeon tiles right here because I'm setting up a two-player game, but that will change based on the number of players you have. So we took that one special stair one, put it into here because that is how we will get to the next floor. Last but not least, each player is going to grab the d20, take a roll, and the player to roll highest will go first. But now you are set up and ready to rock and roll in Quest for the Lost Pixel. If this game looks something like it might be for you, be sure to check out, to check out that Game Crafter link down below. Also, be sure to click on that subscribe button as I'm going to be doing a gameplay and a review of this in addition to an unboxing, which you can check up up in that upper right-hand corner. But if you enjoy this content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers. And if you ever had a dream of making your own game like Peter did, well, then go check out the Game Crafter because uh, they sponsor this, but I tell you anyway, that is undoubtedly the best place to go get your prototyping needs done. They do cards, they do standees, they do 3D printing now, I'm pretty sure. They do cardboard pop-outs, even though it makes you smell like a campfire. But still, you can smell like a campfire and realize your dreams of making a game. That sounds like a win-win to me. But uh, as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.